here in this beautiful year with Fred. Hello. Hi Fred. Um, and we're both at Just So Festival and we're having a great time. I am, are you? Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. It's a good weekend. So Fred owns 20 yurts out here. Is that right? Uh, around about that. Yes. You, you own so many yurts you don't even know the exact number? Well, they're not all mine. Ah, oh, okay. Um, I look after some and some are in bits and okay. it changes. So you sort of <laughs> own a few, you own several yurts but you manage basically a yurt city. Uh, a village. A village. A um, village. <laughs> it sounds a lot better actually. Yeah, we, we all... Less capitalistic village, I um, Yeah, it, it is like a little village and um, we all, lots of people have yurts and we all come together so depending cool. on what's needed and cool. where and when we all sort of together so. yeah so do you mostly take your yurts around festivals mainly that's sort of where it's grown out of I suppose yeah yeah and how long have you been doing it for um, since I suppose about 10 years oh 10 years I think we've done this is our seventh year at just so so oh my goodness so you were on the yurt wagon way before it like left the stable uh, yes, I suppose so. We were making yurts and living in yurts and um, developing uh, the sort of um, uh, continuing a sort of yurt making tradition that a guy called Hal Wynne Jones started. And he was the first person to bring yurt making really to the UK. Um, and so we we follow his uh, sort of method, if you like. And um, the people who taught me learnt off him. And uh, before people were renting yurts at festivals we were we were sort of making them and hanging out in them and mm, so I love that so you're not <laughs> just like a yurt gimmick you're not just like do you know what I mean no, I kind mean, of like uh, my my sisters have lived in yurts I've lived in yurts um, uh, gosh we people um, all my crew have now made yurts, we, we all make yurts and we encourage people to make yurts. Oh so, cool, that's awesome. So sort of come from a sort of making type yeah. of uh, uh, background, we don't, we don't buy them, we generally make, make them ourselves. Them. Oh cool. Maintain them, fix them, improve them yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah, awesome. Um, so how long does it take to put up your yurt village for a festival? Well, we've got a good crew and they they, they, they can get the yurts themselves up quite quickly so I think we all arrived here at like about 12 o'clock on whatever it was Wednesday mm -hmm. and by that evening I think we had well, by the time it got dark we had pretty much all the yurts up oh my gosh but that is amazing it was a whole day of and we distributed the beds bed frames and duvet packs um, but then all the we're hanging the wall hangings and the lights and the mirrors and the carpets and the doormats and yeah the, the tweets. Making the beds and um, finding the keys and um, yeah. finishing them off and giving them a number and breaking a map and everything like that. It takes and a bit longer. It takes a bit of time. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, I would probably classify you guys as like master yurt people, yurt masters. Well, it took us. So we have put. We've got a little yurt, like a bit bigger than this. Is this three meters? It's, well, it's a twelve footer, so okay, three and a half. Meters. Yeah. So we have a six meter. And that took us, we've put it up and down about four times, it still takes us about three hours for one. Yeah, well it, it depends doesn't it, I mean some some of the yurts are a bit tricky and they're all different so um, it's just a matter of practice, I mean at the beginning of the season it takes us a lot longer to set them all up. Yeah. And then you get to this point in the season and they, they up, down, up, up, down and yeah. yeah, it happens quite quickly. Totally. So. Um, okay, what else do I want to ask you? Maybe. One more thing. So a lot of people say that um, living in yurts is something that can only happen in a country like New Zealand or maybe a warmer country. Um, what do you say to that? Um, Controversial I, point. Well, I think that uh, you need to make your yurts to fit the climate where you want to use them. So in Mongolia they have a lot of wind but it's very dry so uh, their yurts sort of are really good at standing up to the wind for example in Kyrgyzstan they have really pointy roofs because of the snow so they can actually take the snow and not collapse under mm -hmm. the weight of the snow that's why they have such high pitched roofs in, in um, Kyrgyzstan um, a UK yurt well you need um, obviously to be very waterproof you need to be off the ground you need um, good insulation you need good canvas um, 
whereas you know in Mongolia it doesn't rain so they don't the canvas waterproofing isn't such a big big issue but but in in, in, in rainy Wales you need you know really good good canvas mm -hmm. and um, good stove and a good platform you know rope down not blow away um, and it's it is quite hard work living in a yurt because uh, and living in the round as well is is quite a it's quite different to what we are used to because houses have corners and yeah. um, it's hard to get the feng shui I reckon inside it is. a yurt like it, you, it can be, yeah. is like you have to be very, they're lovely for sleeping in mm -hmm. but for like cooking in and that sort of thing they're not so good so they're, they're lovely sort of bedroom space but it's quite nice to have something a bit more functional to accompany it like you know for, for cooking and things like that or you can pod off yurts and put yeah. a door in and have another year yeah I love the door. idea of having a little home that's made up of several little pods mm. so our big one is nine meters and it's got extra high size wow. and we do have a kitchen inside it and we have a mezzanine and what sort of yurt is it is it's it like a pacific it is I thought yeah. You it. yeah like the, the, the sort of American style of yurts are, are incredible they're, they're designed to withstand you know sub-zero temperatures yeah and to be lived in all year round but then they have like a sort of PVC cover and a weird yeah. strange metal band and the yeah, ribs I noticed slot in all the ones in New Zealand have a metal band plastic dome and and the little wind winder to yeah, open the windows yeah it's got a winder and, yeah and, and we've been in a cyclone wow. in our tent yeah yeah well that's the thing they, they are really uh they're sort of spec is quite high for yeah withstanding extreme weather yeah um, but it's a completely different to a sort of traditional yurt um, and yeah they yeah, are like a very it's different quite thing. different to these beautiful they just look like branches well this one's Gorgeous. got sawn sawn timber walls but then it's got coppice roof poles so yeah and, they're um, gorgeous nice thing is of course if you're missing a, if a pole breaks or something you can just replace it or yeah if the trelly if you lose a bit of trelly it snaps or whatever it's not the end of the world because you can still put the earth up yeah um, with a lot of tents you know you know or, or even with the canvas you know if the walls get really you know you can just re wash and reproof the roof or you could yeah put a new wall on and um Winner. you can keep keep sort of you know, this is my original yurt, which is you know twelve years old now, and yeah. um, it's still, going, still strong. going strong. I think I've replaced uh, half a dozen roof poles cool. and um, upgraded the door a couple of times. And yeah, it's got had new flooring and and new ground sheet. You know, it gets it, it constantly. Yeah. You know, a bit of wear and tear, but you can keep, tear, yeah. which makes it a really sustainable form of housing, right? Yes, I mean, um, I think that there's there's a lot of applications in sort of for like refugees and war-torn countries where you need uh, pop-up instant accommodation and you know the, the thing about yurt is it's a non guy rope self-supporting structure so it, it doesn't it holds itself up and mm -hmm. it doesn't and it doesn't you know rely on I mean obviously you've got to peg it down but it, it doesn't actually rely on the guy ropes if you're sort yeah, of for the you don't have structure. people tripping outside your tent and it's got walls you know and yeah. um, there are people making sort of pop-up yurts that and uh, I think there is I think I think you know government bodies could, could I think there are places in the world now where they're starting to use use it use your sort of ideas in a sort of um, you know humanitarian mm, cool. uh, sort of yeah it makes so much sense a, yes it does and I mean it'd be good to see that more definitely you know people actually taking you know because it, there's a lot that could be done it's not really been yeah. done yet it's affordable it's mobile, it's really simple, and it's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, there was, for the refugees in Greece, there was a yurt sort of get together when I think uh, they made 10 yurts or something and they took them out and put them up. And yeah. they're there now, I think, being used. So cool, that's, that's cool. awesome. And the all... first yurt I ever went in was at um, Occupy oh, in right. London. Yeah, it's well, in no way. Yeah. Oh, there was a yurt there, was there? Yeah, that was my first ever yurt, and yeah, cool. I'd forgotten about that until this moment. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks so much, Fred. No it's worries. been such a pleasure. So that's Fred's yurts. If you're uh, wanting to find out more, uh, you can check. Yeah, you can just Google Fred's yurts. Or, cool. Yeah. Find awesome. Us that way. Thank oh. you.